Steve, uh, Edinburgh Way, uh, Friday night. It'll be something different as well because it's a new ground uh, you, you'll be going to, Megatland. What do you know of it? I don't know too much about it, but we'll uh, pop down there Friday morning just to have a look and maybe do some units and things down. So it will be a little bit different, but uh, it's something we need a performance and get a victory up in Edinburgh. And you need the victory as well because Glasgow hot on your tails for the the, the, uh, the playoff place. Yeah, it is pretty tight in, in around that sort of fourth, third spot. So it's something, yeah, we need to, to get a victory up there and then obviously have a good break and then come back into Blues and Glasgow, which will be a real good encounter for us up in Glasgow. But we need some points on the board now and then hopefully we've got a, a pretty decent run in with some home games and things. So we need to be on the money come Friday night. In previous seasons, this might have been something of a dead rubber for Edinburgh, but now... As it, if it looks like it's, it's going to happen, the meritocracy for, for Europe, Edinburgh in, in for that final place, probably with the Dragons, maybe the Blues and, and the Scarlet. So how much of a, as, as a boon has that been to the league? Oh, look, it's like, at the end of the day with the Ospreys, we want to win every game we take part in. We, know, we always know it's difficult when we go to Edinburgh. We've had a couple of defeats up there. Um, so it's something that we, we are focused on. We know they're a tough team and they've developed over, as the season's gone on. So we know it's going to be a tough encounter but it's something we be pretty positive in going to Edinburgh on Friday to get the four points. And what about that European qualification? What is, has that focused minds this season you think? Um, I think it's just like within, within us all space we just want to win every game. We, not, don't, we take every game seriously. It's something we want to finish as high up the table as possible. You know, having won the league four times is something we take pretty seriously so it doesn't really change things for us. Selection-wise, then you've got uh, three lads coming back from the Wales squad, James King, uh, Dan Digger and Justin Tipperick. Yeah. What role can they expect to play on Friday? Well, they'll play a big part for us. It's obviously great to have those guys back. They're desperate to come back to play, which is always great for us. And it's something that, that they will go straight into the squad and they'll play a huge part in what hopefully will be a victory for us on Friday. The other interesting one is Ashley Beck, who uh, played for you last weekend, having withdrawn from the, mm. from the Wales squad. Was that a mir miraculous recovery or was there something more... Uh, no, it's been ongoing with Ashley in around his hips and things, and it's like his, his bit part and training and things. It's, it's really difficult for him, so it's something that we, we feel like we need to get right for him. And he's starting to play pretty well. It's just needed a consistent bit of training and playing, I think, for Ashley for, for him to really start developing. Where do you see uh, the Ospreys now for the rest of the season? What is the what, Have you set yourself a, a target for points or? Or position in the table? I think we, we've obviously know where well, we think where we've been around, but it's something we, like Friday is pretty important for us. And like obviously, not getting anything from um, Sunday against Munster was a bit of a disappointment for us. So we know we need to get something out of the game up in Edinburgh because we feel we've got a pretty positive run in. It's something that f the games we feel we should be like looking positively towards. We've got a couple of home games, and it's probably a little bit of a not, not easier run in, but I think it's. Um, a little bit more with the home games as last year, going to Leinster and Glasgow, last two games. If we can be in around that, we, we feel we've got a, a, a real good chance of getting in our top four. And just one on the, the, the squad generally, uh, Alan Wynne Jones has signed. Uh, Adam Jones uh, gave an interview to Radio Wales Sport this week in which he said that uh, he'll probably be staying in Wales. As far as you're concerned, will that be with the Ospreys? Or, or yeah, look, there's, uh, there's an offer being made to Adam, so hopefully. That will be sorted out sometime soon, but we'll get come through the proper channels when something is we, we need to get you with it. But how hopeful are you? Oh, look, we're always hopeful. It's we, we want to keep the, the best players in Wales, but it's something that we can only do what we can do. Like we know the financial constraints we, we're under, and probably doing pretty well considering the the gulf in sort of the amount of money that's different between the, the Irish guys, the Scottish guys. And I think we're doing pretty good business at this minute in time. We've gone and recruited pretty well, um, like the likes of Tyler, they come under the radar, not many people have heard of them, so we've got to do things a little bit differently and it, it, is, it is tough in this current uh, sort of climate, but we feel we're doing a pretty good job within it. And one of the one on contracts, um, a lad who's uh, come to the fore recently is, is Matthew Morgan, very, very popular player with, mm. with, with fans, not just Ospreys fans, yeah. but rugby fans generally. Uh, what would his situation be for the future? Oh, look, it's, it's difficult. We've got a, lo a lot of good tens in, in our squad at the minute, so it's something that probably we've got to weigh up whether like someone wants proper like a lot of rugby. And at the minute, we've got real good development system. We've got Luke Price coming through, Sam Davis, and also Daniel, and they're all probably under the age of 26. So I think it's something for both parties to sit down and rethink really about. Steve, Steve what, uh, what were your wheels for this morning? Um, I think that they'd bring. 
like a good energy, like coming back into the environment. You can see they're really keen to play. They're excited. I spoke to them yesterday. They're desperate to get back. They're desperate to play, and it's it's a good culture to have. And like guys, they could probably take an easy route and not come back, but they're desperate to come back to play. So look, they're class acts as well. You have got people like Tips, King. He's been huge for us for the last couple of seasons, and then like in round Tips and Bigs, they match winners. So anyone's really pleased to get those guys back. Yeah, yeah. Was there a sense uh, that you missed Dan a little bit last week? You always know how to be on the strong traps? Um, yeah, probably. Like at the end of the day, he's a, he's a big game player, and like he knows when to kick and, and run and things. And I think probably last week we probably overdone it a little bit in the way we played, and probably didn't get the rub the green in some some occasions. But like you always miss a test match guy who's who, like at the end of the day he won Six Nations last year, played countless games. You always miss people like of his ilk. And considering where we are, like we lose, I think it was eight guys to international rugby last week. I think uh, Munster only lost three, and then we've got a, a pretty deep injury sort of list at the minute and then when you just go look at it financially it's it's tough tough ask for these guys but in fairness the young group we've got I'm pretty excited about and and I think the future is pretty decent for us. Last week you played Munster, what, what did you learn from that match? Um, I think we learned um, we can't turn the, turn the ball over as much as we did, 47% uh, of the time we had the ball we turned it over so that's 47% when we've had when we've had the football um, I think we were probably um, guilty in our own downfall a little bit. Like you look at that, uh, we spent sort of five minutes in Munster's 22, didn't convert enough points, and then Munster have only come in our 22 for a minute. So it's there's big stats and backing up what we did, what we done on the weekend. Whereas Munster, I think, only turned the ball over 25 percent of the time. So those are the big sort of um, aspects of the game, but it's something we will have to be better at. And I thought there's still a lot of good in our game, but then I think probably. A couple of calls in around the game didn't go away, but it's something that the, the things we got to focus on how we get better. They were very clinical, weren't they? Yeah, they were. They were clinical. They had probably three opportunities. They took them, which is disappointing from our end. Um, and like I think they managed the game pretty well and kicked when they needed a kick. And they probably seen the game out. I think it's probably pretty easy. It's a little bit easier to rebuild when you've got a sort of bigger financial scope to work within. Um, and probably Munster now are developing. They haven't got so many internationals within. Like Leinster get hit pretty hard. Pardon? Yeah, it's tight. But it's, I think we're a little bit tight. There's all pretty well documented in around that. And probably now, like there's, there's, there's obviously differences in around. Like we've got eight boys up in camp, and Munster get three in around it. So it it, it, does, it is difficult, and it's. Um, but I still think we compete in really well, and under the constraints we're working with under. Pardon? Do you think it would be better to the all the teams in the Rapid Direct if the end of 26 nations took part at the end of the season for the Junior World Championship? So then you would have access to those players now. Um, I don't. I don't know whether that would make a, a great difference. A big squad either, as well, um, no, I, I don't think that would make much of a difference. If I'm you, honest. You lost yeah, we lose under 20 boys, but we're like if we desperately needed one or two of the 20s boys back, we'd probably get them. No, it depends what probably what the fixture would be, so I don't think that plays a massive part, if I'm honest. Steve, are you uh, still targeting a top two finish? Or is that a bit beyond? Um, I think it's, at the end of the day, if we have a, a real good run, you never say never, but I think it's looking probably more increasingly difficult in around the top two, but it's something that like we'd be looking at. Obviously, we've got to concentrate on Friday. We need to get a positive result up in Edinburgh. And then I think a run-in, it could be really positive for us. It's like we've got the Blues home, tough one against Glasgow. And then we've got a couple of run of home games towards the back end of the season. So if we're sticking around it, you never say never, yeah. yeah. So what, what about uh, Ryan Jones' fitness? Yeah, Ryan's coming back. It's, um, it's like, obviously, he's, he's had a couple of niggles. But in fairness, he's played... He's, come off the bench in the last two games, so we're starting to build him up gradually, so hopefully he'll be a little bit further down the line come Friday as well. You must be quite pleased with the way Beeman is performing. Yeah, I'm playing... I'm oldest players. And yeah, he is old. Sort of like he is old. Yeah, look, he's, he's great for us, and like we get him all year round. He, he plays a hell of a lot of rugby for us, but I think it's not just Beeman we're pretty pleased with. I think Tyler's 
starting to come on really well. Jeff Hassler, Isaiah. So some of the work we've done sort of in the summer is starting to pay off in around some of the signings and things. And there's a lot of young guys out there like Kingy. Um, and we're missing like the guys of Lloyd Piers, Aaron Jarvis, or Daniel Soup that stepped in and is doing really well. So it's, it is, it's, it's pretty exciting for us. And that's where even under the constraints where we are at the minute, I think it is really positive for the Ospreys going forward for the, for the back end of the season and the future. Because if we do get a little bit more help from other things and, and, and obviously people coming into the stadium and things, I think it's only going to get better and better for us. Yeah, definitely. I think he's growing over the last sort of couple of performances. I thought he was outstanding against Munster. I think, like, apart from one or two lineouts when, when awry, but I think that's just more, more down to our lineout as, as a group. But in fairness, I think he is starting to grow, and I think he will be a, a real good replacement for Hibbs. Steve, I know Max top two, but how confident you get in the top four? I think we've got we've got to be confident. I think we've got to, even though we've got a young group and we speak about it a long time. It's like we've got to come of age at some point, and it's something that we're pretty excited about. We know how big. A challenge it is to, to get in the top four when you've got like teams like Glasgow, Munster, Ulster and Leinster all sniffing around it. But it's something that we're pretty excited about it. We're excited with the group of players we've got. And and we feel you know I mean we should be confident and if we can pick up a result on Friday then I think back in the scene we like we have the ability to have a little bit of a break and rest some guys up and hopefully get the likes of Lloyd Piers, Aaron Jarvis back to fitness and also some of the Welsh boys coming back to us hopefully to have a real good push towards the back end of the season. Yeah, there's a few South Africans playing for them, and look, look, I think they've developed um, over the season. Uh, like I think they started off, they, they weren't so obviously they had a lot of new guys now, but you can see they've grown as the season goes on, and you can see like they nearly pipped Scarlets on the weekend. It was a close run thing out in Connacht. They picked up, they beat Munster in the Heineken Cup, so they are starting to develop. We know it's going to be a, a tough affair any game going up to Edinburgh has always been has always been difficult for us, but it's something we've got to really focus us on this weekend because it's a short turnaround so we've got to be positive in what we need to achieve on Friday. Steve, you must, if they use the impact this come up next season for any teams, you wish you qualified already, looking at the table? Yeah, look, we've got, we, we've, got to, we've got to pick up a couple more wins but it's something we are really focusing on trying to get in our top four. It's not something that's in the forefront of our mind. We want to be finish as high up our table as, yeah, exactly. We want to get in our top four and hopefully add another bit of silverware to, to our to our cabinet, and it's something we're really pushing on to do. It's nothing in the minute. It's just like obviously working within like financial constraints we are, and, and you've got to be fair to both parties. It's like in around Matthew, if he wants regular rugby and those kind of things, and the squad we've got in around that ten department, it is. It's, it's we need to work on something that's best for both parties. Yeah, he does. He does offer a bit, and is like at the end of the day, he's got a lot of talent in around, like his own sort of sort of game. But then we've got sort of three other tens. We've got like Biggs, who's like pushing for the Wales number one one spot. We've got Sam Davis, who we see as fantastic potential, and we've got Luke Price underneath. So in fairness, a development program which we put a lot of money into is we are bringing a lot of guys through the system, and it's in that department, our second row department, our front row department. It's a continual line that we're bringing through. We put a lot of funding into it and we're working really hard to get these guys through our system. And at some point, if you've got sort of four under the age of 24, 25, you have to make tough decisions in the, in the current sort of financial climate. Does he sort of bring something the others perhaps haven't got, you know, with his running, with his play? Um, yeah, potentially. Like, at the end of the day, it's all, all there to see. It's, um, he's got differences to his game as of... Biggs and Pricey and, and Sam Davis, they've all, all got different elements, uh, different sort of positives to bring to, to the game, but it's what fits the team best. Steve, how disappointed you've been for Bigger? Look, it's always disappointing if you play, you want the best for your players, you want to see them all play in um, international rugby, like Webby's done really well, the front five boys, like, and it's, it's really good to see for us. Like, and I think over the years you've seen, like, we've had mass numbers in, in the national body, uh, national campaign. So it's something you know, we, we want to see, I want to see our players represented Wales. And I know there'd be frustrations, but that's what you get with, in international rugby. There's strong competition and obviously someone like Priestland and things, it's, there is competition around the back row. So I think that's only a good thing for Welsh rugby. Yeah, Webby's been great. He's come back, he's, um, like 
he's worked really hard in his rehab and pre-hab and you can see the excitement in coming back to play for us against Treviso and then going on to replicate that against France is, is an outstanding achievement for East, which is something as Osprey is really proud of. Yeah, he did. He's, yeah, he played. played. Yeah, I think so. I think Reese has done really well. He did, like I thought, that, like obviously that it was a um, good platform from the pack and things. So yeah, I think Webby's done really well, and hopefully he'll keep his spot for Tuckham.